Hi guys, so today we have a 2020 election prediction between Kamala Harris and President Donald Trump. I'm doing this considering Kamala Harris has just announced she will run for president. Look at this. And on this special holiday, do you have an announcement you'd like to make? I am running for president of the United States. So there you get it. She is running for president of the United States. Um, pretty big news. I think she has a pretty good shot at the nomination. Not a favourite to go on and win, but I, I could see her winning. So I've already kind of allocated the likely and safe states for either Kamala Harris or President Trump. Um, so now we're going to go in and fill in the rest of the states. So going into the leaning Democratic column, I'm going to put Nevada because she is from the state of California, I could see her going over and appealing to Nevada voters. In the state of New Hampshire, I also see that one going into the leaning Democratic column. I see her appealing to those voters better than Clinton did, and that puts her over the line in New Hampshire. Maine at large, I see going into the likely column. And then that second district I see going likely into Trump's column. He won it in, by 10 points in 2016. It would take a very exceptional kind of Democrat who can really appeal. Even I think Bernie Sanders might come up a tiny bit short in that second district. That's how Republican it has become. In the leaning GOP column, North Carolina, Georgia and Florida, these three states, these three southern states, didn't real the Democrats did okay in them, but not amazingly well. In Florida, Republicans did quite well. In Georgia, they held on to a governor's seat, and in North Carolina, they held on to their competitive House seats, except for the ninth district. I'm not going to go into that right now. It's pretty much a stalemate at this point. Um, all these states, I think that Harris would not be able to appeal to the voters enough to get her over the line in those states. Um, in the state of Nebraska, that second district, I don't see Kamala Harris winning that. She can't appeal to the voters in that district. In the state of Arizona, I actually see that one narrowly going over towards Kamala Harris. Oh, by the way, they added a tilt feature on the 270 to win interactive map thing that I use. But our, anyway, Arizona going into the tilt Democratic column, I see Kamala Harris narrowly winning that one because she's from that area, she can really appeal to the Latino voters in that state and I see her narrowly carrying that state very narrowly ahead of President Trump. They just elected a new Democratic senator. Democrat. There are more Democrats than Republicans in the congressional delegation in Arizona. And so, yeah, Ohio and Iowa, I both see going to the Republicans and by quite wide margins with by four to five percent. So Kamala Harris, she can't necessarily, she's not necessarily the best one to appeal to Ohio and Iowa voters. And I see her narrowly coming up short in both of those states. As for Minnesota though, I'm putting that into the leaning Democratic column. Democrats did really well in Minnesota in the statewide contests. They won both Senate seats, they won a governorship, and I think that that path would continue forward with almost any Democrat winning Minnesota in 2020. Unless it's someone like Hillary Clinton, Eric Holder, people like that probably won't be able to win Nancy Pelosi, probably won't be able to appeal to Minnesota voters. So it all comes down to Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania. Kamala Harris is at 243, Donald Trump is at 249. So let's just go through the scenarios that would win Trump. If he gets Pennsylvania, he still comes up a bit short. But if he loses Pennsylvania and wins Michigan and Wisconsin, he would win the presidency. If Kamala Harris, if she won in Wisconsin and she won in Michigan and Trump won in Pennsylvania, we'd be at 269-269. But I don't think that's the most likely scenario. If, Kam if Kamala Harris is able to pull it off in Pennsylvania, then she just needs one more state to win her presidency. But if Donald Trump wins in Pennsylvania, he's at 269 
and then it would go to the House of Representatives. Uh, and so, yeah, I the most likely scenario between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump is, in fact, that Kamala Harris wins all three Rust Belt states. Now, I know in my previous Harris versus Trump video, I didn't give Harris the edge in these Rust Belt states. However, I do think that she could appeal just barely enough to win over enough Trump voters in those states that were disaffected by Clinton that would narrowly get her over the line. But I think it would come right down to the wire and I would not be surprised at all if Trump carried one or two of those states and that got him the presidency. But for now, I'm going to give Harris the slight edge. Democrats also performed very well in the Midwest, these three states, in 2018. All three states re-elected Democratic senators. All three elected Democratic governors. And all of them have... I believe most of those states have, at least Pennsylvania, I know, has much more Democrats in Congress than Republicans. And the state houses, I believe most of them have Democrats, but please don't quote me on that. So, um, yeah, 289 to 249, Harris is the next president of the United States, the first female president of the United States. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks, guys, for um, watching this video again. Major breaking news, Kamala Harris running for president. Take a look at this. A special Thank holiday. You. Do you have an announcement you'd like to make? I am running for president of the United States. There you get it. She's running. And so, yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks, guys, for watching this video. Comment down your suggestions below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.